Hey, I'm John Fulton with Ohio State University, specifically in the food, ag, and biological engineering department here, uh, and also a state specialist, extension specialist. So a few things as we get into planting, soybean planting here this spring, uh, that just wanted to kind of cover. Uh, to me, especially considering some of the springs that we've been typically having, if we look back to the last five years, uh, weather patterns are pretty variable. We, uh, we get into some situations where we maybe can't wait for just optimum soil conditions to put the planter in. And so given that, you know, what can we do and what's some technology to think about uh, as we go out to the fields this year that may help as conditions, even within a field, may vary? So one of my first things that I think is value add as we think about technology here in the state, specifically for soybean planting, is uh, downforce technology. And in this particular instance, we're looking at hydraulics uh, for downforce, uh, but they're also pneumatic. Uh, but either, either one, the, the value that that technology can provide is number one, we can set that technology to, to remain at a constant down pressure that helps us keep us more consistent depth. We, we did some research a few years ago to talk, uh, to evaluate that, but downforce makes sure that we make sure, uh, ensure a consistent depth. Uh, secondly, the other relevant piece is, is adjustment as we go across fields, especially if we got some marginal conditions, a little bit wet, but then we got some dry areas of the field, these things can adjust very quickly to ensure that we're not putting too much downforce and creating compaction or not having enough in a little dry area that may exist and not be able to kind of get that seed to the depth we want or get that furrow closed. So the relevance of that is, is really helping get that seed placed at the depth and maintain a, just enough downforce to keep that row unit engaged in the soil and building that optimum seed bed for us. Secondly, and, and most importantly in my book, is making sure that we're in good condition and we have our clearances set, not only here between the gauge wheel and our opening disc, but making sure our opening discs are either new or in really good conditions. I find that very important as we think about early season planting and we want to open up that furrow and close it as efficiently as we can, especially considering, like I mentioned, some of the wet and dry conditions we may operate in within a field. So I want to make sure that we got our clearance right here, okay, and all that would be in the, in the book and check that out, not only between our uh, opening disc, but also look at your clearances and double check your gauge wheels, uh, their clearance here between that and disc. That's very important. So again, we're trying to make that optimal seed bed knowing that we're going to potentially have some variability out there in the soil. Uh, in particular in terms of dry and wet conditions as we go across the field. Lastly, I'd offer up, uh, if you're really into the technology and you're using something like this exact emerge or you're using a precision planting kind of speed tubes, uh, the nice thing I would say is that with the speed tubes, as we think about some of our uh, seeding populations here in Ohio, 140, 160, 180,000, uh, the nice thing about these tubes and the sensor here uh, on the front side uh, that we can actually count seeds so we can very accurately uh, give feedback to the operator and also have on our as planted maps exactly what we planted where in that field and so if you're into that we can uh, the the nice thing about these high speed tubes or the what's available to now is the ability to count actual seed drop and uh, especially if you're going to do some on-farm research, it's a really nice way to kind of make sure that you're hitting those target treatments out there if you're going to evaluate a few different populations. So as feedback. But other than that, that's just a quick overview of some of the suggestions I would have to go, going into this soybean uh, spring planting uh, window. Good morning, everyone. My name is Matt Davis. I'm the station manager at the Northwest Agriculture Research Station in Wood County, Ohio, here to give you an update on the Battle for the Belt corn and soybean studies. Yesterday afternoon, April 12th, we planted the soybean study and the corn study went in shortly after that. Average soil temperature at planting depth was 57 degrees yesterday. So here we are off to a great start. Soil conditions were phenomenal, and honestly, it planted exceptional for being the, how early it is. As far as predictions on corn or soybeans, planting date or whatever, we're very early in the growing season, so predictions may be a bit premature, so we'll have to see, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Joe Davlin, the station manager of the Western Ag Research Station in South Charleston, Ohio. 
Um, we're part of the Battle for the Belt um, this year with Laura Lindsay and Osler Ortez. And we planted the April 13th, our corn and soybean first plant date. Um, it planted pretty well. The top uh, inch or so was uh, fairly dry, but uh, our black Brookson soil was a little gummy down there at the inch and a half, two inch plant depth. And we planted into a soil temperature that was around 62 degrees. So stay tuned for future updates on uh, the corn and soybean plots here at Western as well as the rest of the state. Thanks. All right, my name is Lynn Alt here at the OERDC Worcester Agronomy Farm. I'm the farm manager. We're assisting uh, Oslo Ortez here for the Battle of the Bell. This is our first planting today. Uh, we're planting into a Worcester silt loam. We uh, did the tillage, we disc, field cultivated, we prepped the soil also for the soybean plantings. Uh, Osler says the two inch depth of the soil is at 52 degrees. The suspected temperature today is going to be up around 79 degrees. 